Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey there, morning. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hey, Mom. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Everybody have a good break, hopefully. A little bit of time off. It's always good to hear. Um, I guess um, we can get started. Um, I think it should be pretty short um, since I imagine not a lot happened um, with the holiday season and everything. Um, but um, yeah. Should be should be just a quick uh, quick status update for everything, and then um, yeah, I think that'll pretty much be it. Um, you want me to take some notes, Matt? Yeah, that would be nice or super helpful for me. Um, okay, let me share my screen here real quick. Go. Um, so, um, right. Um, so I guess uh, we'll start everything off. Um, wanted to do a quick status report about uh, three twenty five, and then uh, talk a little bit about three twenty six. Though um, that not all of the the feature set has quite been decided there, so it might be a little early to really talk about that. But um, I think that'll just kick this off. Um, so uh, in terms of 325, um, we're in the process of cutting that release. Um, I know the kind of uh, prior to the end of the year, we had previously announced that we would kind of release it before the end of the year. Um, and kind of during the holidays, um, some other bug fixes came in that we thought would um, be good to also um, put into this release. Um, so we kind of um, held off a little bit and then kind of used the holidays to um, soak those changes a little bit. So um, uh, we're a little bit late on that timeline in particular, but um, I think that um, kind of those fixes will be worth it. So um, I guess in terms of more details about what those fixes were, um, there were some improvements um, for upgrading um, uh, Calico in large clusters. So um, I think there, there were some issues where um, there was some service loss and some other um, things observed um, in really large clusters. And so we made some improvements so that um, that would work better in these large scale clusters. So um, yeah, that was pretty much what we had waited off for. Um, so um, we should be in the process of cutting and validating all of that now. So the release should be out pretty much any day now. Um, I had wanted to get it done before this meeting, but um, I missed that slightly. So um, should be out any day now, it should be really close. Um, and I think that's it in terms of 325. I'm not sure if anybody else has anything that uh, they're thinking about for that. Uh, but if not, um, I'll talk about 326. Um, so for 326, um, there's not too much um, in terms of updates since um, we last chatted about this. So um, I guess kind of as a rehash, um, a lot of the features that were originally slated for 325 and then got pushed out because we um, decided to focus more on the product stability for 325 um, should land in 326. So um, some of those features um, include um, separate uh, uh, separate security permissions for Calico node and the CNI. Um, and so that should add more granularity to those, uh, like the security profiles for those. Um, we're going to add um, some pieces to the API to help uh, people manage things like external networks. So that'll also um, come in with 326. And then there's also some uh, BGP enhancements, which have a more additional uh, API uh, resources that we're going to add, such as like BGP pill. Uh, BGP filter and such. So um, 
yeah, those are a few few things that we're um, taking a look at. There's some a few other things I think we need to um, solidify um, exactly what we um, what we want to get in for that. But um, at least that's kind of just a, a sneak preview of kind of what we're uh, going to be working on. So um, yeah, I think that's it in terms of what's been going on with 325 and 326. Um, I don't remember seeing. We've got Aaron. some, I think we've got some patch releases backlogged as well. Is that, am I misremembering? Yeah, no, we, we, we've we uh, had talk about that. Yes, so where there are some patch releases that we've been um, thinking about pushing out for 323 and 324. Um, no particular details on those yet. Um, we haven't quite decided on an exact timeline for that, so I'm hesitant to really set everybody's expectations that high. Um, but um, there are a few things that have come in, so a few um, uh, pretty important bug fixes that have come in um, that are in 325, but not in those past releases that um, we're thinking of making those uh, patch releases for. So um, I guess uh, stay tuned for, I guess, additional details on that later, but um, I don't have anything super detailed on that right now. Cool. Um, I don't see Eric here, so I'm not sure what status we can really get out of um, anything for kind of the operator or things like that. Yeah, I have been out for three weeks. So I don't really <laughs> know what the latest status is. But... Fair enough. We can we can go light. It's the new year. <laughs> I, I imagine a lot of people are in the same boat. Um, I guess, uh, how about any uh, status updates for the eBPF data plan? Can't think of any major ones. Um, I think mainly been working on bug fixes and things there. Um, There's a whole load of bug fixes in 325. Yeah. Um, oh, someone's working on um, uh, topology aware hints for our cube proxy implementation. That's the thing. All right, cool. Um, and I guess. Um, any updates for, I guess, the VPP team? Um, sure. So on our side, uh, it's a bit the same, the same story for the, the release. Uh, the release. Uh, we are not uh, cutting it as we speak, but we are planning to cut the, the release branch uh, fairly soon. Uh, same thing, a bit delayed due to, to last minute fixes, paraphrasing the uh, the, the first sentence. Uh, we're working on uh, uh, increasing salary and uh, a few things that have been lurking in the CI for a while um, and, and driving along so crazy as well. Uh, but we, we have identified, yeah, we still have one data pane issue to fix, but, uh, um, but we, sh we should be very, uh, fairly close. Uh, in parallel to that, we're also working uh, on, so we have a first POC of, um, it's not completely release related, but uh, uh, we have a first uh, integration with the FV test uh, that will probably spark some discussions um, at some point. Uh, so. Sorry, Nathan, I didn't catch that word. What was? The FV test. Oh, FV test. Uh, okay. So Hadi made, made a. Uh, right now it's a bit um, double brain uh, because we have uh, there are some parts of the test that are in the Calico repo and some parts of the test that are in the data plane repo. Um, so probably a bit, a bit of alignment to be there, but uh, uh, we have something that that's working. So that's uh, that's nice. So we are make, generally speaking, we are making progress on the CI. Uh, automating things and uh, increasing in, increasing coverage, um, and 
that's mostly it. And also making a, we're doing a bit of a round trip around the, the documentation to see if we didn't miss anything. The same thing, release season. Oh, I think you're, you muted Matt. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was just saying that it's 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 uh, it's nice to see we're not the only one who has little last minute fixes and things like yeah. <laughs> just part of the process. Uh, cool. Um, I guess um, that's kind of all I had in terms of um, I guess any I guess status updates. Are there any other status updates anybody else has um, to share? Anything else that uh, they're particularly looking for? Things like that. Um, doesn't look like it. So um, I guess uh, I guess that'll wrap up kind of our um, kind of our status updates and check-ins. Um, so I guess we can move along to um, hot issues. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't particularly have any um, real hot issues uh, for this meeting. Um, or nothing in particular, really. Um, I've noticed that there have been um, a bunch of issues along certificate management. So um, a bunch of different uh, issues with kind of expiring certificates um, and keeping those up to sync with Kubernetes or um, providing custom certificates and making sure that those stay um, updated correctly with Kubernetes. So we may have um, some uh, work ahead to kind of do um, on those, but I didn't particularly pick out um, any single issue since they're all not quite the same, but they are all following a, a very similar pattern, I guess, or they all fall under a similar umbrella. Um, so I have noticed those, but other than that, um, I don't have anything else I'd really like to point out here. Um, Looks like we've got a bunch of folks on the call here and maybe we should just open it up um say well one say hi thanks for coming and do uh like is there any you have any questions or topics that you guys wanted to discuss on this call what uh what brings you today uh yeah so hi pratik this said uh actually i joined as a big cat ambassador so I'm just getting to know more about uh, how Calico works and uh, how to start with it. So this is the first meeting that I am attending. But yeah, uh, I'm just exploring uh, in that phase. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's great to have you. Welcome. Uh, feel free to ask any questions to any of us at any point. I think you know also where to find us in Slack too. Anybody else uh, have anything they want to share? Anything else? Uh... Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Aman here. Uh, this is my first meeting joining Calico community. And uh, basically, I've gone uh, through Calico Slack channel and I've shared my issues related to Nomad uh, CNI uh, that I've got answers from Mr. Lance Robson and Sean Crampton. Thanks for the help. Uh, I really appreciate your help, Deepak. So basically, my research was uh, first started with uh, implementing CNI with Nomad, uh, but now my research is going through implementing those policies uh, which Calico offers. So I would like to know uh, if there is any uh, help which I can get for uh, implementing those policies because uh, I'm having some issues uh, regarding Nomad because Nomad is not uh, using those labels which Kubernetes offers, but uh, uh, so how we can enforce those policies with uh, Calico inside Nomad, Nomad uh, basically, that is my main issue right here. So if anyone can help on that, it will be very great. I don't know a ton about Nomad. Does it have a concept of labels or like metadata like, like Kubernetes does? something equivalent uh, actually, yes it has similar something like meta tags uh, which basically helps us to 
uh, provide policies similar to Calico. Uh, basically, you can uh, allow communication between containers from one node to another node uh, through those policies, similar uh, like Calico offers using labels. But uh, I haven't uh, seen anything similar, uh, which is like ETCD handling all of those information in a central position so that uh, they can share policy and enforce those policies to those containers. So that is the issue right now, which I'm facing in Nomad. And I reached out to Nomad co community also, but uh, there was no response so far. So I'm hoping they'll help come out and help as soon as possible. <laughs> I yes. guess it'll be like the early days of Calico, where we had uh, uh, Calico cube controllers uh, reading reading labels and and, and writing uh, etcd, writing stuff into etcd, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably either some other bit of software doing that, or I think we switched using the CNI plugin to do that eventually. So either if Nomad has like an API endpoint that our CNI plugin could reach out to and get this metadata, or if um, Nomad is sending this over the CNI interface. Like I think in, in theory, Nomad might be setting this as an environment variable or something like that. And we need to look into how the, the container runtime that Nomad is using works. Um, but if we get that metadata into our CNI plugin, then we could just write that into our etcd ourselves. Um, so that'd be the first place I'd start looking. I, th I think I remember your post, you were having trouble with cross node communications. Um, did you get that figured out? Uh, yep, actually it was fixed. Uh, thanks to Lance Robson and Sean Canton. Basically, the issue was with uh, uh, the Felix interface, uh, which Calico creates. Uh, so after creating, uh, after enabling that feature in Calico node, so I've got my communication uh, well and good. So basically the issue was first, like uh, Nomad was working uh, when I'm connecting my Calico ports, uh, uh, Calico network over local LAN. But when I switched over to WireGuard VPN, you uh, know, second interface, so stop communicating, stop pinging each other. So then I reached out to Slack community. They helped me, yes, uh, they helped me out. And uh, uh, enabling that uh, VXLAN uh, in, uh, uh, interface, uh, that communication started pinging. So uh, glad that you have guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, I think just to echo what Casey said, I think my, my first uh, approach would be to Add, uh, add a line of debug in the um, CNI plugin to just print out the raw environment variables and um, CNI config struct that gets passed to the CNI plugin, because there's a good chance that Nomad is already passing the information that's needed. But obviously for, for Kubernetes, all the environment variables start with cube, blah, 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 or um, that sort of thing. Whereas if Nomad's passing anything, it's unlikely to be calling its environment variables cube something. It'll be, it'll have its own set of uh, MFOS. Um, and then hopefully those would give, they would either give the data that you need immediately and it could just be added, added into the, um, the workload endpoint, which is Calico's, um, Calico's kind of internal data structure that we use to represent a pod or a container if you're in um, in an environment that has containers rather than pods, or even a um, a VM if you're in something like OpenStack, um, or code could be added to to go look that stuff up. I think yes, start a conversation in Slack, um, and uh, you know if you get stuck with any with any of this, and and uh, we'll help you out. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Eric. I said I saw you sneak in there. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess uh, not to put you on the spot. But is there any, are there any updates, I guess, for uh, the operator? 
I I don't think so. Um, I've been not focused on uh, that uh, exactly. Um, I mentioned Casey, I would be late to the, <laughs> this meeting in Slack, but uh, and that I didn't know of anything. Um, uh, I mean, Matt, Matt or Casey, you can, or well, Matt, I think probably you'd probably have more knowledge on uh, anything for um, operator. Oh, yeah, I guess I do remember now that we did um, we did just cut um, some uh, patch releases for it, um, and one of the big I guess uh, things that went into that. Um, was some uh, improper handling for some uh, um, some cider ranges. So we did just cut, um, I guess, a 1.27. I want to say 8 and a 128.8. Um, so um, you said, are you, uh, are you referring to that thing that that fix that I put up and then you, I think yeah. you or yeah. Renee pick, uh, that was, um, it wasn't cider, it was uh, port ranges. Port ranges, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some patch releases pending. Some have already gone out for some of the um, high scale work for, for big clusters. Um, so there's one mistake in there where we'd, uh, we'd made our Prometheus services um, cluster IPs instead of being headless. And that caused uh, caused cube proxy to render some really big IP tables rules, which were totally pointless. Um, so that, that was one thing, for example. Awesome. Um, cool, yeah, I don't. I don't remember anything else after that. I don't think there was anything in particular we were tracking for that uh, or for any other operator changes. Um, but yeah, feel free to shout out if I've missed anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, Ryan, one thing I remembered is there there was, um, and Casey, you just pinged me, I think, to re-review something. Was that? Was that the, what the CSI? Uh, I think that is what driver? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to add um, the ability to um, basically like we have for like Calico Node and Typha, the overrides of um, what is it for? I think resources and like ty then uh, tolerations and tolerations, node, node selector, all this yeah. sort of scheduling. Yeah, some, uh, somebody submitted that, um, and yeah, I guess we we had reviewed it, and it, I guess it got out of date, and we need to review it again. Um, yeah, I think too, assuming that it would be a small amount of work, because it looked like you had already given an approval, and it just needed to be rebased and re-skimmed. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten back to that yet. So that'd be that's a nice addition that that was missed from before. All right. I think that's all I have now. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, that that was way more than I would have had. So thank you. Um, cool. Um, I guess uh, there's not too much else. Um, I guess before we kind of continue on, does anybody else have anything uh, they want to share? You know, reasons that kind of dropped in today, anything like that. If not, um, I think kind of the last couple things we usually cover um, are, I guess, uh, any Calico heroes. Um, first Calico hero for the new year. Anyone have any nominations? I wish I did. I haven't looked at GitHub in quite a while. Um, I, I do have uh, at uh, <clears throat> at Cyclinder on GitHub. They uh, 
they figured out, they went, dove into the Linux kernel code and figured out that uh, IPv6 VXLAN is not supported on kernels uh, below 3.12. And that's why uh, we were having trouble with that. It's a, a Linux thing. And yeah, they figured that out. I can find the issue and paste it there. Hang on. Awesome. That's a good call out. I've seen Cyclone all over the place recently. Yeah. Helping out with a bunch of areas. Um, hang up. What happened? No. Uh, okay, we can reformat it later. <laughs> yep. So, cool. Um, any any other Calico heroes? Does it look like it? So okay. Um, I think that just about wraps it up. I don't think we have any demos uh, for this meeting. Um, so yeah, unless there's anything else anyone wanted to talk about, I think. Um, we could call the the meeting here. Um, so going once. Cool. It's very nice to see you all again. That's all I had to say. Gotcha. Okay. It's been a while. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's good to see everybody. First time, first time this year. Hopefully not the last. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys all later. So thanks for uh, thanks for uh, coming, and we'll see you guys. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.